Let's right, uh, I'm uh, I'm recording you, Graham. Yeah. Hello, my name's Graham Simpson, and I'm here to talk a little bit about my life so far, which isn't very interesting, I'm sure, and I forgive everyone who decides not to view it. Should we make this a very short video? Could... <laughs> All right. Well, ask me a question then, Mr. Presenter. Mr. Presenter. Um, the Elton Clough <coughs> chat show. Right then. So, Starring Elton Clough. Well, he'd been on twice here, but I can't remember what he was saying much last time. I think we were talking about all the moves I'd made from when I was born to when the different schools I went to. Oh, yeah, that's right. And what a nightmare education it was because it would be upheaval. But not wishing to blame anybody like my mum and dad because they did what they thought was best. Yeah. I would never criticise them at all. Mm. And I've just lost them recently, so um, that adds to it. Yeah. So. So. I was born. You know where I was born? We. Go on then. London. Um. We were born near Crystal Palace. I was born, the nearest football team to where I was born would be Crystal Palace. Right. And had we not moved around as we did, then Palace would have been my team, undoubtedly. Yeah. And as we moved around, I kind of adopted Man United as my team, uh, as everybody from outside Manchester did. <clears throat> so I'm going uh, so, to put this on a stool so I, I can... Uh, don't have to hold it. You might have to pass me a heavy object now. That maybe that cup. Cup is heavy into you. Move that. Is it heavy into? Is it heavy? Okay, it's still, it's still recording now. Okay. Have you seen the tondi by the way? No, you have lost your special scissors. I suppose you could put an appeal out to the public if anyone's got a Yeah, spare. has anybody found a pair of hairdressing scissors made by a firm called Tondio? They've got a number in, etched into it. I can't remember what number it is now, but they were uh, bought in 1977, and I've had them ever since. Now I've mislaid them, and I'd like them back. Yeah, but you'd, you'd be happy with a pair similar to them, wouldn't you? Or identical to well, them? Well, yeah, as long as they've got the short blade and the long handle, that's what I liked about mm. them. Uh, and I'm very disappointed that they've gone missing, really. Mm. Because it's a bit like Billy's Boots, which was a, a, a comic character called Billy. And the only way he could play really well was if he had his granddad's boots on. Uh, but if he had his own football boots on, he couldn't play at all. And it's the same here. Without my tondios, I can't cut hair. How did his granddad get around, though, with his, without his boots? His granddad had died, and oh, right. uh, the boots were in the attic. Oh, yeah. Right? And uh, the little boy decided he, he, he tried them on and played football, and he was a world beater. He oh, scored wow. fantastic goals. Brilliant footballer, this, that, and the other, um, with these heavy boots on. But when they went missing sometime, he couldn't play at all. So did, did you, were they taken away maliciously or some, was somebody tidying up or something? I can't remember and I'm just trying to remember what the comic was that I watched uh, that I was reading something like Boy's Own or something like yeah. that or, or, or whatever I can't remember yeah but um, it was called Billy's Boots all right um, yeah yeah well, yeah it'd be interesting to well be, maybe somebody who's watching this will know what I'm to well I, I could probably look it up on the internet yeah not necessarily you find your spare pair of scissors, but no. certainly find out what happened to Billy's boots. Yeah, absolutely. Because it, 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 was it a character you've not heard of? No, I, I, I can remember the um, the Lord of the Earl of Boot. He was a, he was very posh, and I think he had his own football club. Yeah. And basically, uh, yeah. So that's what he did. Charlotte, 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 Charlotte. Oh, Charlotte's coming in. Oh, Charlotte. <laughs> the uh, Graham's just, uh, we're recording Graham's life story. Oh, sorry to interrupt. No, 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 no it's, it's all right. Interesting. You can do yours as well. You can Not see. very yeah. interesting. 
We could ask him questions. You could ask him questions as well. And also, uh, are you interested in uh, Graham? Would be interested. <laughs> <laughs> are you interested in Graham doing your hair sometimes in different styles? Because he, he not cutting it, it, just taking it up. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. In a, you know, like a French pleat or something like that, or a, yeah. 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 Well, we could make you a make you an appointment then. Did you want a drink or anything, uh, Charlotte? Um. Well, yeah. Let's say hello to you. Are you there? No, I don't want to be on camera. Okay, okay. This well, we've gone, away now. we've gone away now. We're gonna we've gone away now. We only got you for a few seconds. This is Charlotte. She's now disappeared. Get yourself a drink if you want, Charlotte. Oh, thank you. All right then, yeah, so... Um, so I was born in London and Crystal Palace would have been my team and they are my team essentially, even though I'm a Man U fan as well. Yeah. I always watch out for Crystal Palace. My dad was a big Palace fan, um, but he was quite tall. But the, the acid test would be, who do you want to win when Man United play Palace? Well, actually, I want Palace to win. Well, they didn't no. recently in the cup no. final. No, no. Was in, in the cup final. Huh? In the cup final, it came to a 3-3 draw. I wanted Palace to win. Oh. In the uh, replay, I wanted Palace to win. And in the match recently, when they played Man United in the final, I wanted Palace to win. Yeah. Yeah. So mm. Palace are in my heart, really. But I do like I do kind of like Man United, but I'm not as fanatical as I used to be about them. Yeah, no, I think you've been excited in the past about Manchester United. Though. Absolutely, I mean, yeah, well, I mean, don't get me wrong, when I knew we were moving to Sheffield from Aberdeen, I looked at the map to see how close we were to Manchester, mm. and that's the thing that made me most excited about moving, not the fact, uh, uh, not any other factor, just the fact that it would be near Old Trafford, basically, because in actual fact, my school in Aberdeen was the best I had, really, and I should have stayed there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you said you got on well with the art teacher. The art teacher was very encouraging, very nice, Mrs. Burns. I had a, I had a teacher called Mrs. Burns who was uh, good at teaching me maths. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if they related mm. at all. Well, Mrs. Mrs. Burns kind of encouraged me. She was very encouraging. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I started going to a, a private art school on a Saturday morning called the Grey School of Art in Aberdeen, and um, perhaps all, you know, with all the moving around, things got messed up really. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I went to. Yeah. I mean, the example being that the teacher in art in my last school, Bradfield, um, was very discouraging. Yeah. And um, I didn't like him at all. No. no. Yeah, it's, uh, it, it must be strange when people, somebody thinks you're really good and encourages you and all of a sudden you sort of like almost... Really bad. Up. I was really bad. I mean, he said, that you, he said to me, you're awful. Mm. What are you doing in this class? Or words to that effect. Mm. Uh, this is right. I couldn't draw, I think we had to draw a car and I couldn't get the perspective right of it. Mm. So, in that respect, he was right. It was bloody awful. So... Yeah. Mm. But I mean, the other things that Mrs. Burns had been, uh, was it Mrs. Burns? Mm. Um, yeah, the other things that she saw, seen in the art, I mean, what was it, abstract or something like that? I think it was more kind of along those lines than doing a conventional drawing, yeah. I couldn't really draw a picture of somebody or something like that, you know. I've got a, I'm going to worry you now. What I'm going to do, Graz, is get you a piece of paper and I want you to, that pen all right, I want you to doodle. Oh, I should get you a nicer piece of paper than that, really. Well, just start off with that look. I've started with a bit of a scribble. Doodle what? Doodle whatever while you're talking. And you can show us afterwards. Oh, okay. well, my glasses are a little bit misty. Oh. Draw for me, and you shine them up so well as I can see. There you go. Yeah. 
might yeah. be good at this, really. But I know, but this might be worth millions of pounds in a few years. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't know very, very much. Yeah, so, I mean, I, I suppose you could, uh, yeah, do, do what you want, anyway. Yeah. Can you remember going to a, any particular football match, with, which was your most memorable ever football, football match? Yeah, Manchester United v Barcelona. Uh, European Cup Winners' Cup. Um, I can't remember what round it was. I think it was the quarterfinals, I believe. Barcelona were two 0 up from the first leg. Uh, oh, they, they played in Barcelona first of first, all. First, yeah, two 0 What's their stadium called? The New Camp. Yeah, yeah. So Barcelona were two 0 up. They were two 0 up on aggregate when when they faced uh, Manchester United at Old Trafford on a mm. Wednesday evening with the floodlights on. Brilliant atmosphere. Now Barcelona, and they Barcelona. play in red and blue stripes. So when Correct. Manchester United played them in Barcelona, can you remember what colours Manchester United would have worn? I can't remember, but I think uh, they played in a kind of grey sort of colour. Yeah. You know. For so what about at Old Trafford then? When when Man United were in the traditional red, and white. red shirts and white shorts. Yeah. yeah? Maybe yeah. black socks in those days. Don't know. Yeah. And then what? What were Barcelona playing in then? Uh, they were in. I think if I'm right, they were in a yellow top with a sort of purplish bands on it. Like, you know, not not all over the shirt. I think yeah. it was a yellow and blue type thing. Because I remember uh, Madonna. Madonna. <laughs> <laughs> Maradona was in the team. All oh, right. Uh, of Barcelona, as was this German um, midfield player. I can't remember his name, but he was a really good player. Um, I just can't remember his name. I've got a, I've got the program at home actually. What what year was this? This would be in nineteen eighty. Uh, well, six ish, five six. Maybe. There was a. Fa I mean, this is a, a real long shot, but I mean, there was a a German player. I might have played in those days called Gunther Netzer. Yeah, that's him. That's it. Really? Yeah. What my long shot shot found the top corner. Yeah. Yeah, that was wow. it, so. That was a good shot. He was playing for Barcelona that night anyway. Yeah. And um, all in all it was a, a it was a tremendous atmosphere. Brian Robson I think scored a couple of goals. Yeah, what well, well yeah, but well what what happened bit by bit then? So Barcelona were two nil up from before. Yeah. And then what the Man United score a goal in the first half? Um I think they scored just before half time, Man United. Right. And uh, so, two one at half time to Barcelona, the away team. Yeah. And yeah. Then, so what happened in the second I half? I can't remember exactly how it panned out, but um, but Man United scored again. We scored they? another two goals that that afternoon. Oh, that evening. That evening. So we won. Evening the, we won the match three 0 on the night. But three to one aggregate. aggregate. Yeah. Did Barcelona come to uh, near to equalising or? Was there any anxiety near the end of the match? I really can't remember if they came close or not. I know that we stifled Maradona out of the game because he was the danger man. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think Graham Hogg was playing, if you remember him. Um, and apparently he had quite a good game, if I'm right. Mm. You know. Right. So, Can I, wonder, I wonder if in those days, if uh, Barcelona had got a one goal, yeah. that mm. Barcelona might have been the team who would have been going through because uh, they would have got an away goal. Yeah. yeah. I don't know whether that rule was working in those days. I think so, but we, we, we didn't let them score, so... Yeah. So, no, so that was a good game. Another memorable match was a match at Old Trafford that um, didn't feature Manchester United at all. It was uh, Celtic were banned from playing at Parkhead uh, um, through tr crowd, crowd trouble. So they had to pick a neutral ground to play this match against Austria Vienna. It oh, was, uh, oh yeah. and it was at Old Trafford. Yeah. And I bought six copies of the program because I thought maybe one <laughs> one day it may be mm. it may be valuable. But uh, have you still got any? Yeah, I've got them, I've got my program still. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Been to two cup yeah. finals with Man United against Everton and uh, Brighton. Mm. And. Went to uh, Scottish Cup final, Aberdeen v Rangers. Been to that one then. Mm. Aberdeen being my favourite Scottish team, of course. Um, 
Did your mum come from Aberdeen? Aberdeen came from me. My mum came from Aberdeen, yeah. yeah. Can you do the accent at all? Or you just mean, a general Scottish accent? Do a little bit if you want. And but, but will it be a general Scottish accent or an Aberdeen uh, Scottish I think, accent? I think the Aberdeen when Aberdeen was like you can't find me and you can't care for us and go in and out. Yeah. That's Aberdeen. But general Scottish is I don't know, I can't do general Scottish. Glasgow Glasgow called the police police, don't they? Police, but yeah. Aberdeen's yeah. quite a distinctive accent. Yeah. yeah, so it's yeah, so it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, get yourself a drink if you want. I'm all right, then. Um, I wouldn't mind a cup of coffee, please. That'd be great with milk in. Yeah, so we're recording, Charlotte. But we won't put you on camera if you want to be shy. Is it because we'll have to pay Netflix if you appear or something like that? You might have to pay Netflix for Graham's appearance. No, you have to pay me. <laughs> well, you could be Graham's agent. If this uh, video turns out to be really popular. Yeah, so anyway. Um, so what What was the result of that match then? Uh, what, Celtic? Celtic versus... Um, Vienna was it? Austria, it was, I think it was Austria Vienna. Vienna it was, or it was, I think it was Austria Vienna or Graz, but not me. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's your nickname, isn't it? And it was about three 0 to the Austrians, I think. Oh right. And um, what what round of the? Uh... I can't remember. I just thought, you know, it might be a rare program to have eventually. Yeah. So. But yeah, I've, got, I've, got, I've got a lot of first day covers that I've collected in uh, over the years in. Football was fo football themed first day covers, you know. Oh, you mean stamps? stamps yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. Well, um, sometimes stamps are very valuable to people. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, what else can I say? Well, you, you, uh, you also said that you. Uh, Used to work at the Sheffield Wednesday ground, didn't you? I used to work in the play. I used to work as a steward at the Sheffield yeah. Wednesday ground. My dad, my dad's close friend, um, my dad's close friend Stan was a, 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 a regular worker at the Wednesday ground. Um, and uh, what did he do then? He used to be in the bar, Stan. Oh yeah. And then my dad, he got me dad a job there. Um, and he was working in the bar as well, my dad. And I was on the, I was on the terraces. I remember when um, they were playing. I got a stewards' job for Man United versus Derby County at Hillsborough. Yeah. In the semi final in nineteen seventy six, before we played Southampton in the final, we played Derby County Man in the semi final. Oh, Manchester United versus Derby County. Yeah. Because I remember going there really early. It was about half ten or something like that, and I was on Leppings Lane, just near that. Bicycle shop. Oh, was it? Was it a three o'clock kickoff then? Yeah. Yeah. And a coach came down and stopped at the lights there, like and said, all of a sudden this this window shattered from within the coach rather than out in. Yeah. And somebody took a brick or something onto the coach and smashed it through the window when we were at the traffic lights because there was a few my new fans milling about. You so know what I mean? Who was on the coach? And Derby fans. fans. Yeah. So they were having so, a go at the Man United Yeah, fans. basically, already, yeah. And it, you remember, this is 1976, when hooliganism was quite rife, still. Mm. And I remember thinking, I'm not, I'm not hanging around here, I'm go, I'll, go to, I'll go into the football ground, you know. Yeah. So I had a job on uh, that day in the stu on the as a steward, in the stands, yeah. not, not in the terraces. And, um, yeah. And uh, Jimmy Hill walked up, past me, and... This is early doors, this is getting off for 11 o'clock, you know. Yeah. And he walked up past me, like, because obviously the stand was empty. Yeah. And uh, he said, morning. And I said, yeah, thank you. Um, good morning. And, uh, and then Barry Davis walked up, but he didn't say anything. No. So, yeah, it was um, interesting. Mm. I remember, I remember being a steward for uh, League Cup final replay between Aston Villa and Everton at Hillsborough. 
Lee Cup final replay. Yeah, yeah. And I was told by this other steward to go and stand on the cop. He says, go and stand up there on the cop, which is uncovered. Yeah. And you separate the Everton fans from the Villa fans. I says, yeah, right. Was there not a fence? No, no. Villa fans could mingle in with the Everton fans, no problem. And there's me with a yellow jacket on. And I remember feeling this kind of warmth on the back of my leg, right? And it was this uh, Villa, this Villa fan, he, he, he was peeing on me. He was urinating on me. Mm. Yeah, he was. Because my trousers were soaking wet, you know what I mean? Yeah. And then I thought it, was a bit, thought it was a big laugh, you know, and his mates were egging him on and that. And I thought, I thought I have no chance against all these people. Mm. So I was so disgusted or sort of upset that I, I walked out of the ground, mm. took my jacket off, I sprung it, and I walked off. And I got what? on the bus and I, and, I, and I went home. Where did you, where did you chuck your jacket then? I just chucked it on over one of the railings or something. And, uh, I mean, did, were you free from the crowd when you chucked yeah, it? Yeah, I was going out of the ground. Yeah, yeah. so you, you didn't. You didn't so it's on somebody else. No, no. I, was, I was going out of the grounds. I know because I mean I think I'm just thinking you know you, I can't imagine you if it, if you got uh, urine on your trousers was it? Yeah. I can't imagine you. Did you take those off as well? But you had the other trousers. No, I didn't have any trousers. Didn't I? Didn't carry any spare ones with me. Right. And, uh, so. And I were a bit worried about getting on the bus because I thought maybe stinking of. Uh, yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, so. Yeah, like that was. Uh, I didn't enjoy that at all. Yeah, I, I, and I shouldn't. And according to Stan, he said, "Where were you?" And I said, "This guy put me up there." And he said, "You shouldn't have gone up there. You should have been with us in players' lounge." Yeah. And I said, "Well, he just this guy who seemed to know what he was talking." Supervisor. Yeah. yeah. So I um, I uh, got from then on. I was working in the players' lounge. Yeah. yeah. And we had a match against uh, Wednesday versus Liverpool. So this is before I, this is before Hillsborough. Yeah. Um, this is before the tragedy. And I remember they sent me down the stand and that sent me down, sent me down to the basement to pick up a crate of beer and bring it back to the players' lounge because they were running short behind the bar. Mm. And it was absolutely chocker the players' lounge, absolutely full. You could barely move. You know what I mean? And uh, but I'm trying to get through with this crate of beer in my hands. Mm. And like Grobelar, Hanson, Lawrence, and they're just taking it out and sticking it in the pockets, do you know what I mean? Mm. So I ended up with probably about half a crate by the time I got to. Oh, but it made your job easier, it'd be lighter. It'd be lighter, yeah. So. But I mean, the beer would have been complimentary, wouldn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I've to a few players. Ozzy Ardealers once said, asked me if I got a cigarette. Uh, in the, when I was in the players' language there, Tottenham, I just played. Uh, and I remember speaking to Chris Waddle and saying, is, uh, is Gary Mabbott come up after matches, you know? Yeah. Because we went to the same school in Bristol. All right. Gary Mabbott was in the yeah. same... Gary Mabbott was a year younger than his brother, Kevin Mabbott, and Kevin was in the same class as David. Oh, yeah. And Kevin Mabbott went on to play for Crystal Palace and Bristol City. Yeah. And... Um, uh, and David would have made a good play. He played for Bristol Boys, Dave, but he yeah. would have, he would have made it definitely. And um, Gary Mabbott played for Bristol Rovers. Yeah. And his dad used to play for Bristol Rovers, Ray Mabbott, in the sixties. Yeah. So that was interesting. And uh, he Did, said, um, "No, he said he doesn't, he doesn't usually come us up. He, he usually just goes and sits on the bus and waits." You know. Yeah. So. Did your brother David, did, did he have an injury? Did that stop him becoming as good a footballer as he, he could He developed a really bad bout of appendicitis. Mm. And um, he, uh, he, 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 and he had these ongoing stomach pains, you know, following that. Whether it was all psychological, I don't know, but mm. he, he would have made it. He would have made a great goalkeeper, actually. You remember him? When we lived in Bristol, my dad used to kick a ball at him. We used yeah. to go put the car away in the garage and then walk back through the hospital grounds. Yeah. And um, my dad used to, and they got one of those big cricket white boards, you know yeah. what I mean? 
So we used that as the goals. And my dad used to really whack it, really belt it, you know what I mean? Dave yeah. was a great keeper. He was a really good keeper. And his, 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 his idol was actually Pat Jennings. Yeah. And, um, and, he, and, he, and he was, David's always been a bit of a Tottenham fan, so. Yeah. So that, that's. Shall I was playing cigarette darts. Yeah. I've never seen cigarette darts before. <laughs> That was made a laugh. So, yeah, yeah. So that's uh, yeah. So yeah. So um, so we moved, did, go on. So we moved to Sheffield from Aberdeen. Yeah, which was a shame in a way, because um, I was doing okay in Aberdeen. Yeah. And doing very very badly at Bradfield. But the yeah, but the art the art teacher um, in Bradfield because you couldn't copy um, an image of a car onto a piece of paper. No. So, so what the, the other art teacher up in he ended up going to a special class for talented people then presumably. Well, the great school of art. Mm. Um, yeah, I can't remember what much what I did there. To be 